Hi, so uh, today I'm going to be talking about this wonderful tool I have in my hand called the glitter gun. Uh, it is um, made for um, industrial glitter application, like on ceilings. Uh, however, it's fabulous for applying glitter on all sorts of surfaces, uh, walls, um, you know, coated, you know, uh, pieces like, you know, uh, maybe a parade floats, fiberglass pieces. Um, it's just fabulous in general. Uh, it, it puts out a very nice wide uh, uh, amount of glitter uh, and this piece on the front is removable and it allows you to put it on and direct the glitter so if you're doing a ceiling you can point it up if you're doing a floor you can point it down odd shaped you know coming at a wall you can turn it this way and so forth uh, it's very very handy having this removable it's also handy for cleaning it uh, it's not an electric gun it is a manually operated so what you are doing is you are opening up and this is a hopper uh, and you have a crank here which is cranking this tool through here which takes the glitter uh, and pushes it through a hole down here um, it then sort of in a way kind of uh, compresses it a bit and this, when you the grinding action actually makes it shoot out the front so it, it is extremely simple uh, but very very effective so what we thought we'd do today to give you a, a, a look at how it operates and also to see what sort of effect you can get with it is we have this um, retail store piece here it's going to go ahead and paint it black and then uh, shoot some uh, silver glitter on it and we're going to be using the 040 which is the most popular um, size out there and uh, we'll see how it looks okay great so in other videos we'll talk about you know painting on surfaces and uh, using paint as an adhesive uh, more but just to be really quick, you know, I'm basically going to load the paint up quite thick um, so that there's really something for the glitter to adhere to. The one thing about the glitter gun is you have to have a really good adhesive or it just bounces right off. Um, so uh, we highly recommend doing paint or a, a white glue. Uh, don't water it down. Keep it nice and thick and uh, your, your glitter will stick to it really well. Um, if you were doing this whole piece, it would be tempting to, to paint the whole surface and then glitter it you can basically get away with that as long as it's not super hot and your paint's not drying really fast. But otherwise, maybe just doing a side at a time is the way to go, which is what we're gonna do right now. So here we go. Did it miss anything? Okay, here we go. I'm going to be uh, loading up the gun now with the silver glitter. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and do it a little bit more than halfway, which is way more than you need. And the most important thing with this gun is when you first turn the handle, you're going to notice a splooch. It literally comes out in a very yucky mess. But once that's done, um, you tend to get a very even coverage. So here we go. That's the splooch is now done and I'm ready to do it. Now it's very tempting to sit there and fire it up like this. That's not what I would recommend. I would recommend firing it up over here and then moving it onto the surface like so. Moving across the surface like so, so that you don't get any spots of unevenness. So that right there would be considered accent coverage, um, which, you know, is very nice. You're seeing a lot of black, you're seeing some silver. It's, you know, it's just a really nice effect, but you can actually get total coverage with this. Uh, you just have to move in closer. So here we go. I'm gonna do this section with total coverage.
And you can see I'm kind of, kind of fade out. Kind of come in and just do like a medium coverage here. You can see just by the amount of cranking I'm doing, I'm sort of able to control the amount of glitter that comes out. You can go back in and whatever spots you miss. And it's actually for, a, for something that's throwing out a fairly abstract, shall we say, amount of glitter. It's kind of, it's kind of going everywhere, but you can see I actually did have a fairly good amount of control. Uh, so, you know, instead of having, like right there, it just sort of looks like I have an uneven fade line right there. So I'm actually able to sort of go in there and very carefully direct this and control. So even though it seems like you would have no control, you actually have quite a bit. So I was able to get pretty much complete total coverage down here, fade it up here into slightly more, or slightly less, I should say, and then up into what we had the, the first part, which was the light coverage. So um, you can see that even though uh, it seems kind of clunky, you're actually able to do uh, pretty much all effects from heavy to light to accent and so forth. So um, once you've used the glitter gun and you're going to change colors, uh, you got to clean it out. It, it's not a huge e event to clean it out, fortunately, but there are a few things to keep in mind because you definitely do want to make sure it's clean for your next color or you're going to be shooting whatever at whatever, you know, like right now we're going to switch to blue. We don't want silver coming out. So here we go. Uh, it's staticky, of course. It's glitter. You all know that. You can use that canned air a little bit, but be careful if you're going to use it right away. Canned air does put out a certain amount of moisture, and glitter likes to stick to moisture, as you know. So um, if you're putting your, your gun away for a while, sure, use the air. Uh, even use compressed air if you're in a shop. But uh, if you're going to use it right away, I don't recommend it. It will be uh, a little bit damp, and the glitter will stick. So here we go. Dry brush. A little bit of tapping. More dry brush. More tapping. I just use the cheap brushes from, you know, the dollar store or a uh, hardware store um, because you don't, you're going to just screw up your bristles if you do this too many times in a day. So. Okay. And if you uh, do the old fashioned blow into it, close your eyes. Because, uh, you know, it's a cavity, so it's going to come right back at you like a boomerang. Okay, we're almost there. A little bit more tapping. A little bit more brushing. And I think we have like one piece left, so we pretty much got it all. Okay, second place you want to clean is uh, the spout hole. Okay. So it actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and actually it's very clean. And there's one last pot and that is down here. Right there where the crank is. Okay, so that spot right there you want to make sure that's clean. And uh, yep, so it's pretty good. And then there's one last thing to keep track of. And it's inside this spout. And you can see there's definitely particles in there. In this case, brush. And you can blow on this because if you blow, it's not going to get on you. It's going to get on whoever that's pointing at. <gasps> like so. So in this particular case, um, we did paint on the other side. I'm going to show you Mod Podge. Um, we have this surface of blue. And since we're putting uh, blue glitter over the top of it, we actually want to maintain this. So we don't want to necessarily paint over black and then put blue over it. It looks better to have blue on blue. So we're going to go ahead and use Mod Podge, and we're going to put it on as if it was paint. So I've got a little uh, uh, sponge roller, and I've got a little tray, and we're going to basically treat it like paint. So here we go. Uh, in other videos, we'll be covering adhesives, but just uh, so you have the information here, this is Mod Podge Gloss, and uh, it's what we recommend for using with glitter uh, in pretty much all cases.
because you want to have a glossy surface because glitter is glossy and you want it to match. So gloss on gloss. So here we go. You want to be very liberal in your applications of this glue. Um, when you're using a glitter gun, it's coming at it with some velocity. And if it doesn't hit something very soft like glue, it will bounce off. So there's a little uh, bounce factor that you have to keep in mind. So even though you might want to have a nice, thin, beautifully applied glue, uh, don't. <laughs> you want to have it uh, thick and wet and ready to grab onto glitter. Uh, you're really not going to see any of these streaks, but at the same time, we're using an ultrafine, so you'd see it more than if you were throwing a chunky at it. If you're throwing a chunky at it, you wouldn't have to worry about um, the streaks per se. But with ultrafine, it does actually show up a little bit. So you want to make it nice and wet, but not super uneven. Like I underestimated the glue a little bit, so I'm going to pour a little bit more in my tray and okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go back over the whole surface one last time lightly, just to make sure we're still nice and wet. I'm using foam uh, as opposed to uh, a nap. Uh, like paint roller, uh, just because of the amount of the paint roller will soak up so much of your glue, you probably won't end up with anything for your project. So I recommend foam rollers. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom uh, because we just did a demo where we used silver and I don't want to get silver on this. So I'm just going to let it be unpainted at the bottom and we'll deal with that on our own. We're planning on putting a trim piece down there anyway. So. Okay, so one last time over it, just for good measure, making sure it's very wet. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move the paint, or excuse me, in this case, the glue. I'm going to fire up the glitter gun at this point with uh, my beautiful ultra-fine polyester glitter. This is actually a mix that we call Deep Lagoon Mixed Madness, and it is gorgeous. There you go, you can see it in the hopper. I'm putting in more than I need. I'll be able to pour a lot of that back out. So I'm all set. I'm gonna prime off to the side. I'm gonna double check to make sure I have my governor open all the way because I want uh, the most amount of glitter coming out. So that's all the way forward. And going off to the side, and now I'm moving in. I'm planning to do the opposite, where I have very heavy coverage at the top, medium coverage in the middle, and then lighter coverage at the bottom, just like I did on the black, but in reverse. So I'm just going to lightly come in here and just dust it. And remember, Mod Podge dries clear, so it's not like you have to have the whole thing covered to get that nice effect. I'm going to get in close so you can see the amount that's coming out when I crank it very slowly, which is in that mid-range. And now I'm going to go really heavy right up here, and I want you to be able to see how much is coming out there. And then I'm going to go down to the very bottom where I'm just barely cranking it all. You can see it's just poofing it out very lightly, but very evenly. So if you're just doing a very light accent, you just wanted a very undramatic look, this gun will still give you that. Okay, so there you go. So the glitter gun uh, seems like kind of a clunky tool, but the truth of the matter is 
you can really do um, fairly controlled glitter coverage with it, uh, you know, all the way from super, super heavy down to a very light accent. So I would recommend it for um, really, you know, anything that wasn't a, a super small scale. Like if you're just, you know, glittering little things like that, that would be silly. But, you know, if you're doing floats or you're doing uh, retail store displays or uh, like we did tree branches the other day, uh, these sort of things, absolutely. I, re I recommend it without reservation. So um, we um, sell them at bulkglitters.com and we also rent them. So if you're only uh, planning to do one, you know, glitter project, then uh, probably renting is the way to go. But if you're planning to do, uh, you know, projects often or you have an art studio, then uh, investing in a gun is a good thing. All right.